Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I'm going to be doing my March wrap up today. I know it's a little bit late, um, sorry, I just haven't really had a chance. I've been really busy over the last few weekends and just rushing around and doing things a lot in the evening and filming lots of man booker stuff. So March is a wee bit late, but I think it's fine. Um, what I'm going to start with is fiction and what I'm going to start with in fiction is the man booker ones because I'll either have a review up already for these or I can link one um, above if I have or like they'll be coming up in the next few weeks. Um, so the ones I know I've reviewed are Mirror Shoulder Signal by Direct Nors, A Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman, A Fish Have No Feet by John Carmen Stephenson, Fever Dream by Samantha Sweblin which I have reviewed but I don't think is up yet, and Swallowing Mercury by Roletta Gregg which again I'm pretty sure that I've filmed and uploaded but it isn't with you guys yet, um, so that will be upcoming as well. So we have a little selection of things and, just by dint of this month, only one of them isn't in translation um, because I did my reading in translation um, when I was in Stockholm and that was a lot of what I've read, so madly only one book has actually been written in English that I've read in fiction this whole month. So I have two Yuri Herrera books. I have Signs Proceeding the End of the World and I have The Transmigration of Bodies. Now I very much loved Signs Proceeding the End of the World. Um, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It's a book that I'm sure you've heard spoken about already and it's been really popular um, on booktube and lots of people have reviewed it. Um, but it's essentially about like a really tough woman um, crossing over from Mexico into the States and about her journey and why she's doing it and um, just about the kind of hardships and stuff that are involved in that kind of a crossing. And it's also this great like, I don't know, like it, ha it has like a really nice like metaphorical element that flows through it as well and um, it's kind of this trip like almost through the underworld and it's strange and sort of really darkly magical um, but yeah I absolutely loved it I thought it was really really good um, writing and yeah it, it's very brutal it's very sharp writing um, and I actually really love this one um, so yeah I'd really recommend this one. Um, the other one which was the transmigration of bodies I didn't love as much now I don't know if it was just that I didn't connect with the kind of story as much, but this one is essentially about, um, it's kind of a play on Romeo and Juliet to some extent. It's it's a situation in which you have um, two families who both have something the other family wants and about um, these two warring gang families trying to um, swap this uh, sort of precious cargo um, whilst dealing with like the politics that are involved, like the family politics. Um, it was still really good, um, and I think because I read them so close together, um, I'm a bit more critical of this than I maybe would be, because I really did like both, but I think reading them so closely, I would definitely say that Signs Proceeding the End of the World is my favourite of the two. Um, they both are definitely worth a shot. I think I gave one four and one three stars, so you know, pretty good, pretty good reviews from me. I finally got around to In the Country by Mia Alvar, which is a really interesting collection of short stories. I think there's nine short stories, yeah, nine short stories um, that all focus on people of Filipino descent, essentially, and about um, people that have moved away from the Philippines and about their lives in all these different countries um, and about the kind of lives that people from the Philippines are like going away and leading in these other countries and how the kind of people they are at home is kind of almost erased I suppose by their movement and by the perceptions that other people have of, of people from the Philippines and it was really interesting to see this kind of thing done with like one kind of people almost um, because I think a lot of the time I'm, re I'm either reading like one story and then I feel as though I don't have like the context or I'm reading lots of different stories about lots of people who have similar experiences but have like a slightly different twist on it whereas whilst these stories aren't obviously identical and everyone's experience is different they have like this similar theme that I think brought the topic far more to home than I was expecting. That is a fairly long book um, but I do think it's well worth it. It's a really interesting one to have like a focus on um, immigration and a focus on the perception of immigrants as well um, and also you know what what does the experience of leaving your home country feel like to the people who leave so yeah it was, it was really interesting it also paired quite nicely with um, the book I read it with which is This Is London which has a whole section about um, these Filipino maids who are working in this London hotel chain and about um, how they are 
almost like pretending to be these like docile empty women when they're when they're working because that's what's expected of them but when they're home they throw these fabulous parties in which they will bake and like stuff themselves full and that that kind of combination of that alongside the stories in here did really give it a nice kick so if you're looking for that kind of thing or um looking to read a little bit more about immigration and this is an one you might be interested in at least. And the next one I have as very kindly sent for review by Granta and this one is Memoirs of a Polar Bear um, by Yoko Tawada and this is a really fun book. Um, it's all told through three different generations of polar bears and it's all fairly strange and um, there's so much that's in this book so I read this one quite early on in the month so my thoughts are a little bit scattered just because it's been a little bit of time but I really did enjoy it. I think Essentially, it's talking about the difference between rights we give animals and the rights we give people. It's also exploring um, human issues through animal eyes to some extent. Um, it kind of talks about the interrelation that people and animals have, and, and also, like, just weirdly, it's about like familial expectations and like pressures and um, like what parents expect of people and what um, children kind of perceive about their ancestry. Like, it was a really interesting book and. I think it's, it's a very different book because it didn't really feel like it placed anywhere, like it, even the characters move around a lot in the book um, and I quite like that, I quite like that kind of sense of floating that I had when reading this book. I was really um, surprised and a little bit disappointed that this wasn't, um, at least in the long list, for the Man Booker International for this year. I, I really did think this one was going to be there. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's definitely worth a go um, if you're interested and yeah, I think in some ways it's a really light read and in other ways it's a really heavy read and um, it's a little bit strange in that respect um, because it is about kind of like polar bears but it, it's not just cute and fluffy. I don't know, hopefully that's of some use. And the one I have that's in English is The Angel Esmeralda, Nine Stories by Dom DeLillo. So, I really didn't like Dom DeLillo before I picked this one up. And I was really unsure if I wanted to read anything else by him. I thought about unhauling this, um, and I really loved some of these stories. Some of them read like the rest of his writing had to me, in that I just didn't really connect with it, and it all felt really stupid. And then there were a few, so there's one I think it's called Hum yeah, Human Moments in World War Three, And I think that story changed my perception a little bit, and it was such a good story. So. It's talking about basically the weaponization of space. And the idea is that there is some huge scale global conflict that's going on. And um, people are firing at long range ballistic missiles. Um, and basically everyone's, everyone's nuking everyone. And there are a set of astronauts who've gone into orbit around Earth and their country, I don't think it says which country it is, but it's kind of implied it's probably the US. They get in contact with them and say, look, you actually have the capacity to help us um, and you, you need to just float around in space and if we tell you um, to end this, wipe them off the face of the earth. And these are guys who haven't gone up as military, these are guys who have like gone up as scientists and it's about how they are perceiving their life and their careers like knowing that they're now at the trigger point of this huge like demol demolishing half of humanity basically um and i absolutely loved that story like i absolutely loved it and there, there are another few in here um the angel of murder itself i thought was brilliant and what was the other one the other one that was really good midnight in dotovsky I loved both of them. I actually wrote, I write quotes on my wall at the moment and, and I wrote a quote up um, from Midnight at Dotyzewski because I loved it so much. And it was, it's one of those things where in that story, um, it reflected something that I'd done that I never kind of knew anyone else did. Um, but that means the six stories I either were kind of mare about or I didn't like. And the problem is, I think I'm going to be really hit and miss with the lily because I either just, I just don't get it and I don't think it's entertaining at all or I love it. And it's one of those things where I'm not sure whether I want to push myself to read more of him knowing that he may uh, miss me entirely in what he's writing or, or whether it's worth keeping diving in every now and again to see if I get any of those hits in a novel that I would love to read. If there was a whole novel about human, world, human moments in World War III, I'd have bought it immediately. 
it's a tricky one. Have a have a conversation in the comments down below. Maybe tell me tell me what you would do if it's an author that you'd loved some of and, and just uh, meh about the rest, and um, whether you think it's worth the risk or not. So yeah, that was that one. And the last two I've saved because they're both absolutely bloody fabulous. Um, and the first one I have is by Night the Mountain Burns by Juan Thomas Alvira Laurel. This is brilliant. This is about an island off of Equatorial Guinea, and. Oh my goodness, I can't, I can't really explain quite like what it was I loved about it. This happens, when I really like something sometimes I can't put it into words as well. This was an environment which you felt you would never be able to relate to, I think. Um, for me as like someone in the Western world, someone in Europe, like... This is a group of people who live on an island completely separated from humanity, who are entirely reliant on um, the customs of that island, on... Um, like they're fishing, they're gathering, um, they have strange customs. So, so things like single women don't necessarily have any pressure to go and find a husband, but those that don't may go and have sex with the people who sail past in, in, their, in their big ships and exchange sex for tobacco, gaining them tobacco husbands. So they pay off men with tobacco to do the things a husband might do for them. And that's considered to be fine. And there's also like elements of like, um, like witchcraft in here and, and things like um, they believe that if a woman is too hot in the night and she goes down and bathes in the sea she's a witch and, and a she-devil um, rather than just menopausal um, and yes so it's, it's this odd scenario where it's a really out there situation and it's kind of a society that you can't really connect with but oh my goodness you do like you find these little pieces of these people and these these lives and um, it's strange how much can be different and so much still be similar. Um, and I just felt as though the characters were really well done. I think there was writing that was from a young child's perspective that was still literary and I think that's really good. Uh, I think that's really hard to find. Um, and yeah, I just feel like this is really well formed. I thought it was absolutely beautiful and yeah, I would really highly recommend that you guys go out and read this one if you do get the chance. Um, I, I just thought it was brilliant and, and a part of the world I never read anything at all from and knew nothing about and, and I really love learning about new places through books like that. So yeah, there's that one. And the last one, again, I, like I love this one as well. Um, and I didn't really want it to end, to be honest. And it's The Seems Just in the Wind by Caesar Era. And I need to read more Caesar Era, is what I've decided. Um, because I really like three novels as well. I like this a lot more. Um, he's incredibly quotable. And I don't, I don't know how on earth I'm supposed to explain what this book's about, but it's magical and fantastical and impossible and kind of about travelling. <laughs> and and kind of about love and it, it's so difficult like it feels like a fable I think his writing and it feels like like a story you only remember bits of from when you're a kid and you try and reconstruct when you're an adult that that's what his writing feels like but there are these fabulous quotes through it okay so he mentions the the feeling of traveling and feeling as though when you're there the people aren't how you expected and he asks what am I after I don't know People disarmed by their own visions, like Picasso's women, Medusa-like and limping, thousand-armed goddesses, hollow people, the fluid people. Um, and like on the same page, um, no one leaves their lives anywhere. All lives seem to be portable. They are naturally so. Like, there's just something beautiful about his writing, and it's also there's this really clever, really, really clever like twist between him writing about writing and him writing, and and it's so so smooth and like just for a reader it's such a pleasurable experience to see someone so masterfully do that um and you know even for that on its own i would say it's worth reading this but it is a fabulous little book um and i'm definitely going to be picking more of his work up and do you know what i know that they have got more on these gorgeous editions so maybe maybe he's someone that i might be trying to read a fair few things from this year we'll see i've got so many books i need to read but maybe he's someone that i'll like put on my to buy list um for authors I'm trying to explore this year so so yeah that's the last one I have to show you in fiction and I will have a whole video on non-fiction and like other um to go up shortly hopefully I'll get them up on the same day but it's quite late in the day now so maybe not maybe two different days um but yeah hopefully you've enjoyed hearing about all of the all of the translations this month really um 
I've given you a few things that sound interesting. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these, if you want to check any of these ones out, um, or if there are any that you've hated. Also, please don't forget, tell me about those books that were, where the authors, where there's some stuff you love and some stuff you hate, and, and is it worth giving up, or do I, do I keep going and hopefully I find something longer that I love? I don't know. You advise me. I hope you're well, and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you.